This is the Bishop of Motivation, Spence Finlayson, the master motivator, Diana's last child, host of The Possible Dream, host of Dare to Be Great TV show, uh, also host of In Search of Inspiration TV show, author of Phoenix Rising and author of Dare to Be Great, and also host of Dare to Be Great radio show. And now you're watching Bouncing Back. September 11, 2001 was the world's wake up call. After the chaos and confusion, we awoke to the realization that life is a precious gift and that it is our responsibility as human beings to lead and live our lives to the best of our abilities. For most of us, that meant looking at our current state of affairs and recognizing all the changes we needed to make. We often know how important it is to change our lives, but do not know where to begin. Someone once said that, there is nothing about a caterpillar that tells you it's going to be a butterfly. We are bouncing back. We have no control over things and situations. We cannot control, but we can control how we conduct ourselves. And for every negative, there's a positive. For instance, we can see ourselves as locked up or forced to stay in. How many times prior to this pandemic did we wish for time off to have a break or to get our house in order? How many times did we want to eat better or start an exercise program? How many times did we want to go to the gym? Even if we did, we were too tired after a long day at work and then taking care of everything and everyone afterwards. A century ago, there was a pandemic and lockdowns. Social distancing and mask wearing were also used to make it through, but they were not afforded the lockdown with a sophisticated technology where you could stay connected with the outside world. How many times did we wish we had an opportunity to take advantage of online courses and education? This pandemic is a terrible thing that brought with it a ton of opportunities, brilliantly disguised as problems and challenges. Aphorisms live because they contain human truth. Adam Gopnik wrote in the New Yorker magazine last summer and reached across barriers of class and era. Now, if you know me, you know then that I love motivational, inspirational quotes. And one of my favorite quotes is simply this. Fear knocked at the door, bam, 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 and faith answered, and no one was there. You see, fear can't peacefully coexist where there's faith. And I recall a lot of my quotes that I've collected over my 34-year career as an international motivational speaker. As we all face new struggles, looking for wisdom from the past to help with the present. We are bouncing back. We are coming back. Like a crow seeking shiny bits of enlightenment, I've snatched quotes from anywhere. Books, songs, movies, speeches, articles, plays, poems, religious dogma, bumper stickers, graffiti, t-shirts, and strange, and even from strangers. But there's a disclaimer here for you with these quotes. At times, their origins have been historically murky, but it's okay and it's important that their condensed insight holds us steady. Ahead of us, attacks on the cities during World War II, the British government issued and displayed three posters with messages written to boost the morale and mentally prepare its civilians. One of them, keep calm and carry on, has grown in popularity over the years because its message is applicable beyond its original intent. It's also pointed now that coronavirus is invoking comparisons to World War. We are bouncing back. Similarly, a line from President Franklin Roosevelt's 1933 inaugural address to a nation paralyzed in the economic fear of the Great Depression has endured its original meaning because the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. It speaks to the psychology of all panic. A life lived in fear is a life half lived, declares the character in the 1992 Australian film Strictly Ballroom. The line attributed to the film's director and co-writer, Baz Luhrmann, now, Steven Spielberg's Bridge of Spies writer, Ma Chaman and the Cohen brothers, repeats variations of this wise exchange 
between characters. Aren't you worried? Would that help? For what use is our fear right now? Worrying is like sitting in a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but it never gets you anywhere, wrote humorous Irma Bemback. We are bouncing back. Now is the time for a more scientific and analytical approach. As the physicist Marie Curie said, nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. Now is the time to understand more so that we may fear less. Before Marlon Brando was the more boss in The Godfather, he was being controlled by another more boss in the classic On the Waterfront. He plays Terry Malloy, a talented young boxer who is convinced to throw a fight so that the mobsters can win money. And he always thought boxing was an honorable sport. After throwing the fight, Malloy realizes that it has ruined his career, and he regrets his decision and his brother's role in convincing him to lose. Charlie, look kid, how much you weigh, son? When you weighed 160 pounds, you were beautiful. You could have been another Billy Cohn. And that skunk we got for you as a manager, he brought you along too fast. It wasn't him, Charlie, it was you. Remember that night in the garden? You came down to my dressing room and you said, kid, this ain't your night. We are going for the price on Wilson. You remember that? This ain't my night. I could have taken Wilson apart. So what happens? He gets the title shot outdoors on the ballpark, and what do I get? A one-way ticket to Palookaville. You was my brother, Charlie. You should have looked out for me a little bit. You should have taken care of me just a little bit so I wouldn't have to take them dives for the short end money. Charlie, oh, I had some bets down for you. You saw some money. You don't understand. I could have had class. I could have been a contender. I could have been somebody instead of a bum, but rich as I am. Let's face it, it was you, Charlie. You still have a chance to be somebody. Don't allow this coronavirus to stop you from dreaming. For anyone alive in 1988, Bobby McFerrin's Don't Worry, Be Happy has been stuck in our heads for a long time. There have been many happiness songs uh, written before and since then. We think of Pharrell, uh, the Partridge family, but Bobby McFerrin's Grammy winning tune had the longest staying power because it's simple and directive. Personally, I prefer Robin Nesta Mali's Don't Worry About a Thing because every little thing is going to be all right. It's also directive, plus a call to appreciate the little things like sunshine, sunrises, and the bird sound. Things could always be better, but things could always be worse. It's a line attributed to actress Marla Gibbs, who was uh, George Jefferson's maid on The Jefferson. The great housekeeper back in the 1970s in the sitcom The Jeffersons. You see, we are bouncing back. Fear means false evidence appearing real or forget everything and run. I equally like this framing uh, from Fred Rogers. Often when you think you are at the end of something, you are at the beginning of something else. It speaks to this time that in our lives where we start a new era without any negative connotations. Better to be busy than to be busy worrying, actress Angela Lunsbury said, who quoted and she said, because author Vivian Green explained, life isn't about waiting for the storm to pass. It's about dancing in the rain. Or is, as Sting says, when the world is running down, you make the best of what's still around. You see, we need to make the best of what we have right now, especially if the grocery store shelves are empty. You can't always get what you want in life, but if you keep trying, sometimes you get what you need. And that's the truth. We are bouncing back. In his landmark book, Man's Search for Meaning, Viktor Frankl chronicles his experience as a prisoner in Nazi concentration camps during World War II. And he described this psychotherapeutic method, which involved identifying a purpose in life to feel positive about, and then immersively imagining that outcome. Everything can be taken from a man or a woman, but one thing 
the loss of human freedoms. Choose one's aptitude and one's own set of circumstances to choose one's own way. He said he survived the Nazi concentration camps because of one of three reasons. One, he had some great cause that he believed in. Two, he had some family members that he wanted to see alive again. And three, he believed in God. Yes, he believed in God. Now, 200 years before the coronavirus, the German writer von Geith said this, some poignant metaphorical advice to do your part in this pandemic. When he wrote, let everyone sweep in the front of his own door and the whole world will be clean. The philosopher Nietzsche famously said, if you could find a why for living, then you could almost endure anyhow. If you could find a why for living, you could almost endure anyhow. Eckhart Tolle added a line that says, life will give you whatever experience is most helpful for the evolution of your consciousness. That evolution will likely lead you to look out for others in this crucial time. I shall pass this way again, but just once. That's why it's important to show kindness to the people wherever you go. And whatever happens, we just need to endure. If you're going through hell, keep going, said the British Prime Minister Spencer Winston Churchill. Because as the days rock up or the situation intensifies, more things may fall apart and further call on our resolve, our power to power through. Remember, this too shall pass. This too shall pass. It's not going to stay with you. All right. Abraham Lincoln said something uh, that we will always believe in. And he was a fan of this great line. He said, and he said this, how much express, how consoling in the depths of the affliction, the impermanence and struggle with favorite themes of the Buddha's recorded sayings, including praise and blame, game and loss, pleasure and sorrow, come and go like the wind. That should give us hope. Maybe then, even then, that help us to draw comes after the darkness, wrote Lisa Wingate. We are bouncing back. That's the perspective articulated at the end of Robert Zemeski's hope fuel film, Cast Away. After four years stuck on an island of uncertainty, what to do, once he returns home, Tom Hanks, the character, uh, says, I know what I have to do now. I've got to keep breathing because tomorrow the sun will rise. Who knows what the tide could bring? And in the end, I'm going to give the last word to that late um, singer, John Lennon. If you can only remember any of these great messages and aphorism, we can do this. Everything will be okay in the end. If it's not okay, it's not the end. I leave you with a great poem, If by Kipling. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowances for their doubting, too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting or being lied about, don't deal in lies. Or being hated, don't give way to hating, and yet don't look too good, nor talk too wise. If you can dream and not make dreams your master. If you can think and not make thoughts your aim. If you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same. If you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you have in your life too, broken and stooped, and build them up with worn out tools. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch, and toss and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about it, your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they're gone and so hold on when there's nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue or walk with kings, nor lose the common touch. If neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you if all men count with you, but none too much. If you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, 
Yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And which is more, you will be a man, my son. God bless you as you live your best life now.